Example 5 says use right hand endpoints of the subintervals to approximate the area under the curve over the specified interval using the specified number of subintervals, where our function f of x is equal to 4x minus x squared from x equals 0 to x equals 2 using two subintervals. So I often think it's helpful to sketch a quick graph of our function and 4x minus x squared is a quadratic function with, if you factor out the x and set it equal to 0, you end up getting that the zeros or the roots of this function are at x equals 0 and x equals 4. So if this is 4, this is 2, our function is going to look something like this. Although after 2, we're not so concerned about since we only want to look from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So I just put a dot, a dashed curve there. So basically, we are wanting to figure out the area under the curve there in that shaded region. But I'll erase the shaded part. So we want to use two subintervals. That means that they're going to be equal size. So uh, they're each going to have a width of 1, and we want to make sure that we're using right-handed endpoints. So the way that we're going to draw our rectangles, they are going to look like this. So hopefully you can see that because we're drawing right-handed rectangles, or right hand endpoint rectangles like this, that when we approximate the area, we are going to have an overestimation of what the actual area is. Now, we need to figure out the areas of the rectangles and then add them together. So the area is going to be approximately equal to, let's, um, let's say, area of first rectangle plus area of second rectangle so that's approximately equal to the first rectangle has a base of 1 and a height of since our x value is x1, then we need to plug that into our function. So essentially we're evaluating f of 1, and that's going to be 4 times 1 minus 1 squared, which is equal to 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. So the height of our first rectangle is 3, and then plus the area of the second rectangle, well, the base is going to be 1, and we need to figure out the height so that's going to be f of x2, which is equal to f of 2, which is equal to 4 times 2 minus 2 squared. That's 8 minus 4, which is equal to 4. So that ends up equaling 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. So using right-handed rectangles, we get that our approximate area for the curve is 7. So example 6 is the same thing as example 5, except now we're asked to do it with left-hand endpoints. So that is the only difference. Now let's draw our rectangles in the image. It, our left-hand endpoint, or our x, x0, is going to be 0. And so if you plug in 0, into our function, you end up getting 4 times 0 minus 0 squared, which ends up being 0. That means that our initial rectangle has a height of 0, um, which is not good because we're trying to be approximating that area. But our first rectangle has a height of 0, so there is nothing we can do about that. Then our second rectangle, we'll call that x1.
that is our second rectangle. So essentially, the only area we're going to be approximating is the area of this rectangle here. And we're actually missing out on all of this area in the red. So again, hopefully you can see that for this example, our approximation is going to be an under approximation. So the area is approximately going to be equal to the area of the second rectangle because the area of the first one is zero since it has a height of zero and it's not really a rectangle. So that is going to be the width of the rectangle is one and then the height is three. So then our approximation is three for this one. And that is our answer. In a later section, we are going to solidify how to find the exact area without having to use rectangle approximations. So that's something that we have to look forward to.